and wait in front of his office and maybe 18 months down the road ask for a glass of water and just see whether that works or not. <laughs> the beginning of this uh, whole session, we were not there, but Sunilda was going to everyone and asking about who is a real entrepreneur. So everyone had a different answer, but he also explained someone who is willing to take risk. Uh, it's like, uh, although in a different context, Swami Vivekananda used to say, Sattar Jo Siddhar. One who can take the, who, has, who doesn't have the fear of losing, can actually become an entrepreneur. Mr. Ghosh or Chandrasekhar Rai, many people affectionately call him, didn't have that fear of losing, so he could become what he is today. Without wasting any more time, I would like to call upon the next entrepreneur to narrate her story in front of none other than Mr. Ghosh himself, Monji Chatterjee, uh, founder, director of Folk India Limited. She started with a unique model, an unique model she was you know, developing some merchandise product for all the leading, you name an automobile company across the world. She was developing or getting the stuff developed by uh, artisan craftsmen and all that after giving them training. And post lockdown, she has developed a whole new model of uh, designing for the designing for dignity. That's designing for dignity. That's another unique model. Uh, so. Manjit, you can narrate your story yourself. Yeah. Can I, can I talk without the mic? Because I'm not used to talking to uh, many audience. And especially, I'm really nervous sitting just beside uh, Mr. Ghosh. Next time, Meghna, <laughs> Meg Meg <laughs> can, next time, Meg Tut can describe another qualities of Bengali being oh my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good one. But, uh, you know, few things he just said. Uh, I, I cannot, I was just thinking, oh my god, how can I not uh, mention, which is, I always believed, uh, unless you have income, unless you have livelihood, you just cannot do anything. I mean, you know, no, no matter how much you studied or have done, uh, whatever, we, we, we try to set so many things right, but unless you have livelihood set, you have a sustainable income, uh, you really cannot uh, survive. So what uh, we did, we, we are still trying to do, is uh, create livelihood, a sustainable livelihood. And you know, I am not, as a person, I'm very impatient. So I could not seat for someone to get it right. So I, I uh, said, uh, yeah, said uh, out to do this myself. So uh, there, there is a huge. Uh, ma vast population who uh, live by doing crowds and other things, uh, especially uh, in India or, or the, the, like the countries like India. But how many people do buy craft? How many of you are wearing handloom uh, here today? But if if handloom is something to be to be owned for a very special occasion, then it cannot be a sustainable uh, business out of it. No one can create sustainable business out of it. So what I try to do, what as an organization we try to do, is you know try and make it as functional as possible, so that. Everyone, I would like to see everyone wearing handloom, going to office wearing handloom stuff. What we, we try and set everything sorted to get that right. I mean, everyone say that uh, it's a handloom cure. You cannot wash it in washing machine. We say you wash it in washing machine. You know, we would make the quality so right. It is not free. It will just work as your Marks and Spencer shirt. <laughs> that is what, so that we wear handloom, we wear, uh, you know, all the things made out of craft. At least we could make it functional and usable for daily life. And we can create a market which has been sold through a market pool. 
it's, it's not a sustainable business. So that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to create, our mission is to generate 100,000 livelihood through design and innovation. So I believe design has a huge potential to change uh, that we want to see. So when I say design, it's not about colors and shapes. It's about making things right. It's the science of textile which you could incorporate in handloom or craft that we are, you know, that we see uh, ourselves around and by. So as a folk, folk as in people, not in uh, ethnicity or, or something. So uh, we, at folk, we are trying to create a brand which is to, to the core, it's functional and usable in, in, in daily life. You know, and unless a product is, uh, I mean, each and every product is uh, not, not unique, I mean, equal in, in, in every, uh, every sense. I mean, it's, it's not transportable, it's not, uh, uh, we, we cannot send it, uh, transport it globally. So all we are trying to do is making uh, every product that we create as functional as possible uh, so that everyone could use uh, those products in daily life and we could create more livelihood out of it. So how the, our business model is we skill train because these, these people who are uh, doing this craftsmanship uh, they have a mind block. They they don't know what to make uh, because they are they, they can't relate to our life. What is needed? What kind of you know product would be useful for our daily life? So what we do we, we give them skill training and uh, do some uh, you know intervention with their uh, with with tools and techniques so that. The, the, the I mean, intrinsic part of the craft is there, but with the help of little tool and technique, we could they, they could, could create many more product uh, to, to be sold in the market. So how, we, we skill train them and then they work with us for a while, let's say six, seven months, so that we know their, their skills are at the right stage and they could create impeccable quality of product. And then some of them we employ uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a payroll. And some we create SGs and uh, cooperatives. And they work with us. I mean, you know, when we get an order, so when I say order, I mean volume order, like a container load full product to be sent to UK or, or so. Because we, we manufacture licensed merchandise from Volkswagen, Ford, all these companies. So, and, and as you can understand, as a German company, they 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 mean quality and they want impeccable quality yeah, right. for, for, for their goods. So, we give them all the material, we cut the uh, fabric and uh, all the necessary stuff. We we get them to, to uh, send them send the products. I mean, send the material to those uh, units. And then we we quality check there itself and get the product and uh, mm -hmm. ship it to the uh, ship it load. So that's how that's that's what our business model is, and that's how we are functioning. That's what hope is all about. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. said that one of the key qualities of a successful or an entrepreneur is being patient and Manji said she is being very impatient. Mm -hmm. so there is no paradox actually you need more patience to con keep your impatience under control <laughs> otherwise you just go berserk or go away. Uh, just one question during this whole period when you did your business or when <coughs> your corporate or business empire many have left Kolkata as well. Why did you stick to Kolkata? Uh, well, uh, for, for the time being in 2010, I went to UK and set up a business there as well and then sold the 
business and came back. The only reason is uh, the my 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 interest lies here because this is the people I want to work for, and this is this is the this is the way I want to work. Uh, I, I mean, see, as I said, uh, the the folk is about people, and there we have the resources here, all the resources. So if we do a little bit of tweaking, it could change the uh, you know world. That that's what I feel. So there is no other no other place than India I could have worked, and especially in the craft sector. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you would uh, know that uh, the West Bengal does have all the crafts has been done in India. Almost all the craft because there's so much influx happen uh, in in so many so so much convergence happen through so many years. So we have you name it and the, the craft is there. I mean, from sandalwood craft to lac to you know textile. No, no one would no one can deny the you know textile sector. So almost. Someone was mentioning, uh, I, I mean, I think Bengal was saying the uh, the jewelry business is uh, great in West Bengal. Textile is something, you know, all the designers, all the designers who work, they, they source textile from West Bengal. So, so how can we not make the necessary changes so that we could change the game? Uh, we could change the face of the uh, handbook and handbook. Did you can, can I ask a question? Yes, sure. Sorry, sure. And, I mean, because it's a very interesting match we have on stage, right? We have financial guru with uh, somebody from social entrepreneurship. And in our country, and because we work a lot in the sustainability uh, sector as well, we've noticed that there is an inherent uh, negative connotation to the sustainability word. So the moment you say sustainability is social innovation or social entrepreneurship, so I have a charity. Everyone thinks exactly. charity. So how important is financial literacy? And this is maybe first if, if CSM can take the question and you know, then you know, weigh in on it. How important is financial literacy for both the stakeholders? So even if you're talking about the consumers on one side, how important is it for that to, uh, to try and explain how the world of social entrepreneurship works and even for people who are working in the sector itself. We end up underselling ourselves so much. I've seen so many people doing incredible work, but they're, you know, they're not able to sell themselves to the best extent because uh, they're always, I say, uh, you know, we, we can package it, but not get the best value for it. So it's a question on like, how can we make that sector better or more powerful or more unified with financial literacy? Smile. No, it, it is it is uh, very important uh, topics in the uh, financial industry, the financial interest. And also there is a lot of debate I uh, was uh, uh, made on that with the company. Uh, who is a responsible for the financial interest? Is the government? Is the regulator? Or is the enterprise? So there's a three way you can think about it on that. Yes, it is very important on that. Before you provide the financial services, you must educate the financial, uh, the, all the parameters which is needed for those people. And it's a depend on class to class. And uh, very big challenge I faced and it started this program and our major customer are women and they have not any financial independence. There is a need of that that keep the chance to those people in the financial independence then they will become to learn about financial literacy. Because any of the education, any of the literacy, if it is not practiced, it cannot be like to people hold they will forget about it. So our people are not practicing as a financial independence. Financial independence, if you see that, the if I ask the a major of the people of our country, 50% of the people, 
uh, are women. And they are not cash earners in the society. And if all the children, their first demand ask to mother, and who is not earning any money. And they are going to father, sometimes they are providing. And major of this, the low income people, they are shout if ask the money to the husband. This is a normal nature. So if I give the financial literacy to those women, what do they can do? It is not useful that. So useful that time, if I give the financial literacy and then giving this the financial support to run the enterprise, which is called the livelihood. Madam is correctly mentioned about it on that livelihood. Then it is to be very active. For that reason, the when I started it, I given the two weeks financial literacy and then I provided the financial support. And I find out on that, the, though it is a very different the point, 62% is illiterate. Women are not that much. And 90% of my women customers cannot write their name. They are using the thumb. And I initiated from the beginning. 90%, 100% of my women customers must sign. 15 days, we teach them how can sign their name. Without sign, they will not get the money. And they are trying. Full book have been completed to sign. And they have been successful. Is it, is it called the final literacy? I don't know. It is my need. I have it done. No, I need to educate the customer how they can be like to take the loan, how they can be like to repay the instrument, what is the terms and condition, what is the right of this customer. I mean, everything they, I have been uh, teaches them in the 15 days. When they come to my office to take the loan, we have been asked the five portions within this syllabus. They must give it the answer. Otherwise they are again going to out of office. Again they are, are given that the orientation by the staff. Okay? Then come. That we are trying on that the practically how we can be make them as a financially literate. What is the main objective of us financial independence? They earn their own. They save their own. They make their expenditure their own decision. So they are not fully depend on husband decision. And I feel proud out of my 25 million customers, 17.5 million customers are women. Wow. And very good successful. So that I say that the patient is very successful a point of indicator, uh, the women is very much passionate. You believe it or not, their passion is more than the man. <laughs> you may be debate on that, <laughs> but it's like, I, I saw that, it's my practical experience on that. No? So now, they are earning, they are not asking the money from the husband. And automatically husband has come to ask money from <laughs> because she, he said that, that today uh, is a rainy day, I have not gone to with my rickshaw, I have not earned, so today you will give money for my daily money. Why? <coughs> Sharing on that, finally, I am very gender specific, uh, coming to my office to take the loan, it is compulsory. Husband and wife coming together with the bicycle, and husband is driving the cycle, and wife is in back carrier. Wife entered to my office, seated in a chair, 
has been waiting in the outside. Is it any office in our country? No. This is change of the life. Change of the behavior. Change of the power. No. This is need of our country. I do not know if it is a financial interest or not. But it's need of our country. This is an entire MBA class in the <laughs> 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 We had actually started it long back, even before RBI had made it mandatory for banks to spend a whole of a lot of amount uh, into financial literacy. I think somewhere near Moria, we had started an issue. Although it has taken a new shape now, but initially it used to train, like you know, spread financial literacy in the initial years. <laughs> The second question has come on the financial literacy. Is it in an expenditure or investment? It's a real investment. It's not expenditure. If I make it a business model, earning from that, this is my responsibility. I will invest some money for financial literacy to my customer, to my society. And if this will be returned back to me as a is earning visible. But if I see that it is my only CSR, it cannot be packed anything. Only some just of the picture and some of the people calling and finish. mentioned a point that she would like everyone to oh, wear this handlooms and other things. There is another lady, I am not going to unfold her story today, we will have some other session with her. Mrs. Goes also has these Mokshi creations, we will hear the story about it sometime later, not today. But from the uh, timing, we have another woman.